This is a very subjective issue, but there are some people that find the wind and road noise in the Model 3 to be on the loud side. It's definitely not as quiet as the cabin in something like a BMW or a Lexus, but I don't find it to be too loud. It's quieter than several of my previous cars, but those weren't luxury cars. There are some aftermarket accessories that you can get to help reduce the wind and road noise. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the door seal kit to see what, if any, difference that it makes, including a before and after test drive with a decibel meter. But before I dive in, take a moment and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. I have to tip my hat to the Model 3 Man YouTube channel for bringing this door seal kit to my attention. You can find the GoLoho door seal kit on Amazon for $30. The kit claims that it will reduce wind noise, improve air conditioning performance, and provide a quiet driving environment, which is a little redundant. And I seriously doubt the claim of improving the car's air conditioning performance. The kit arrives with the door seals separated into their own bags and labeled where they're supposed to be installed. The instruction manual, on the other hand, that comes with the kit is a little on the brief side and doesn't provide any super detailed help. The most that I took away from the manual was that the rubber is going to smell bad and that I need to leave the door seals out to let it air out. But then again, I figured that out for myself as soon as I opened the box. <laughs> These things stink, but the smell does go away. When installing the kit, you should start off by cleaning the areas of the car where you'll be placing the seals. In the pack, you'll find some adhesive promoter wipes that you're supposed to use after cleaning. It's a chemical agent that enhances the bond between the adhesive tape and paint. Installing the actual door seals isn't hard, but just takes some time and patience. The easiest pieces to install were along the B pillar, which runs along the inner edge of the back doors. There are pieces that run along the side and lower edge of each door. When running these pieces along the bottom, you need to make sure not to cover the holes in the door. Water can make its way into the door from the window area, so these are drainage holes that allow the water to escape from the inside of the door. You can run the door seal up above it or cut a small section out to allow for drainage. The hardest piece to install was for the A-pillar, which runs along the inner front edge of the door. You'll have to work your way around the door hinges and cables to make it work. I found it easiest to start from the top and work from both sides of the door to get the alignment right. It's pretty awkward. The first thing that caught my attention was how different the door sounds when you close it. Sadly, I didn't think to get a recording of the sound before I installed the trim, but the doors do sound more solid when they close now. Overall, it took me about an hour to clean and install all of the pieces. I may have dropped the ball and forgot to capture some audio of my door closing sound before installing the seals, but I did run a driving test to get a before and after comparison. I used a couple of different decibel and frequency meters to help gauge the change. For both runs of the car, I drove along the same stretch of the mass pike with speeds ranging between 30 miles an hour and 80 miles an hour. And this is obviously not a completely scientific test because there's variability in the runs. On my second run, there were a lot more cars on the road than my first test. So there was more noise in the environment than on my first run. I synced up the two runs in my video editing software and pulled readings from the decibel meter every 15 seconds along with the speed. What you'll see with the exception of a couple of random samples, the door seal run had a drop in decibels. In some cases, there were differences of up to 10 decibels in improvement. If you average out the delta I was seeing across the entire experiment, it was a 2.3 decibel improvement. But that doesn't tell the whole story, because speed plays a big role in cabin noise. The faster you go, the louder it gets. If you average out a decibel reading based on speed ranges, you'll see that the smallest improvements happened between 30 and 40 miles per hour and 70 and 80 miles per hour. Between 40 and 50 was the biggest delta of 7.65 decibels, and between 60 and 70, I saw 3.62 decibels improvement. That result wasn't too surprising to me since lower speeds don't generate that much road and wind noise in the first place. As speed ramps up, it gets louder, so there'll be diminishing returns on the improvement at the highest speeds. Subjectively, the cabin does feel quieter than it did before the seals. In fact, it feels quieter than the small decibel level improvements would make you think. There's a good reason for that based on how we perceive sound. The loudness of a sound will feel like it's doubled every 10 decibels, and the human ear is capable of detecting a loudness change every three to five decibels. So why would my car feel like it's a noticeable change if there's only around three decibels improvement overall? Well, I think that comes down to how the human ear perceives loudness over a range of frequencies. The ear is geared towards frequencies in the range of 2000 to 5000 Hertz. 
which means sounds in that frequency range sound louder than sounds in other frequencies, even if they're happening at the same exact intensity or decibel level. Our ears don't hear the loudness of each frequency equally across the spectrum. This is why taking a reading with an unweighted decibel meter can be perceived in a very different way. The tone or quality of the sound in the cabin has absolutely changed in the car after I installed the door seals. My best guess is that some of the frequencies that I perceive as loud have been filtered out now, which gives the impression of a more comfortable and quieter cabin. Was it worth the $30 and an hour of my time to install these door seals? For me, in the end, it was. It was a relatively cheap experiment that has altered the sound of my Model 3 for the better. It's not a dramatic change, but it is an improvement. But like I said in the beginning, I never thought my car was overly loud in the first place. If you're someone who's more sensitive to road and wind noise in your car, I definitely recommend taking a look at this kit. If you're not bothered by the sound of your Model 3 today, then this is something that you should pass on. Have any of you installed this kit or any other noise fixes for your car? Or are you perfectly happy with how your Model 3 sounds today? Jump in the comments and let me know. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really does help the channel. There's some other ways that you can help support the channel too. Check out my SFSF shop for some cool Tesla, SpaceX, Science, and Undecided t-shirts. There's also other links in the description for some great gear and discounts. And as always, an extra big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. A big welcome to two new producers, Martin Wareham and Dave Cohen. Your support is really helping to make these videos possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.